much. Where does this bill and where does this legislation in general go from here? Joining us now, uh, New York Democratic Congressman Anthony Weiner. He's one, the one who says the current proposal would indeed be DOA on arrival as reclined. Blogs on health care for the Washington Post, domestic policy, uh, his beat uh, for that paper. Jonathan Capehart, editorial writer for the Washington Post. Congressman, I'm going to begin with you. Where is the resistance to getting real choice, real competition, and for that matter, a real public option into this legislation? We watched Wall Street cheer yesterday, and analyst reports from Goldman Sachs circulate as a victory that some 200 million people would not be able to create any real market force. There was not a public option. The, the, the large insurer stocks went up and everybody else groaned. Well, you answered your own question. It's the insurance industry and their proxies here on Capitol Hill that have fought very hard. And let's remember, you know, the public option that we're talking about is a relatively narrow one to begin with. For some of us, it is a concession that we've already made some subsidies to do it, although the Baca subsidies are too small. The problem is, what do you do if the insurance rates keep going up, if the taxpayer keeps footing more of the bill, and more and more people can't afford to pay it, even with a subsidy? Uh, Ezra, you've got this five ways to improve the, the Baca bill, five ways to save health care. I feel like there's this gigantic elephant in the room, which is this this anti-competitive insurance structure, and we're basically moving the chairs around the elephant, trying to either subsidize for poor, do something for an exchange, but we're not dealing with the elephant. I, I agree with that entirely. And, you know, I'll say this for the Bacchus bill, the exchanges, the sort of competitive structure, they do have one advantage over the others out there, which is that eventually large employers will go in. But individuals like you and me are never allowed in. And one point to add to representative uh, to the representatives, even the co-op is strangely watered down. They didn't just water down the public option to co-op, but then they make it so the co-op can't sell its, uh, sell its insurance to large employers. The co-op can't set purchasing rates for itself. So it isn't just that we've protected the insurers from public public competition. We're actually protecting them from any real competition whatsoever and even from consumer competition. So the degree to which that bill really insulated them from any of the pressures you know you might want to see them exposed to was in fact a bit surprising. Yeah, Representative Weiner, I actually want to play you a comment from Senator Ron Wyden who was here in the last hour and get your response. Take a listen. The fact is these bills literally wall off uh, the opportunity for competition and choice for well over 200 million Americans. What can the American people do to help people like yourself create real choice for everybody in this country? Well, you know, Senator Wyden in that clip and also in his op-ed in the New York Times today makes a good point. For all the crying about how these, the, the public option might drive insurance companies out of the market, in fact, as Ezra said, as the senator said, for most of your viewers, they're not going to even have an option to go into the public plan. Look, one thing you said at the top is actually very true. This is an overly complicated effort to jerry-rig the, the, the insurance-based model that we have. That's why many of us, and frankly this is gaining steam in the House, many of us believe we should just return to the basics and say, you know, you know what? Medicare is a successful program that has a financing problem, but a successful program. Let's expand it. Maybe 10 years. We'll add 10 years of eligibility every five years hereafter to gradually get more people under that umbrella. It's simple. It's got less overhead, and it's actually gaining some traction. What we're finding is after months of talk, the Senate plan came out and actually took several steps backwards in important things, made it less affordable for the middle class, and actually provided less competition for insurance companies. If you were to look at, uh, away from Senator Baucus, who obviously is the focal point, it's his name on the piece of legislation. If you were to look at the community, left, right, center, Democrat, Republican, that are on the take from the health insurance companies, that are, that are receiving cash flow to protect any competitive environments, whether it's by pushing the public option away or by simply preventing any real competition in choice, a la Wyden Bennett, free, the free choice amendment, uh, how big is that constituency? Well, look, there's no doubt about it. We're taking on two very powerful forces here. One is the status quo. You're taking something that a lot of people have experience with and trying to change it, although not as much as some people claim. And the second is the health insurance industry is very, very powerful. You know, you saw that feedback loop that the stock market was yesterday. A lot of people are paying a lot of attention to preserving the status quo. And actually, it's going to get even better for insurance companies. Let's remember, 30 million additional customers, 90% of them, 80% of them are going to be going to private insurance companies. They stand to gain a great deal here. Unfortunately, they don't seem to be willing to put any skin in the game. Jonathan Capehart, what's your sense of where the president's at on all of these talking points, choice and competition, public option, you know them as well as I do, as he sets up into this media blitz over the next five days? Well, it seems that the, pre you know, the president outlined what he wants uh, in these bills uh, last Wednesday, and he's going up to College Park 
uh, to do this rally. And I found it curious that Senator Wyden wouldn't talk about what the president said to him in relation to his ideas for income competition, uh, but said he was making headway. But it seems to me that now that Senator Baucus has put out his plan, um, the baton has been passed to the, to the Obama administration. If they want to get anywhere on health care reform, if they want to try to pull Republicans in the Senate, try to pull Congressman Weiner along, they're really going to have to push really hard to get them to the table. And right now, I'm not sure, given all the things that we've heard, that, they're go that that's going to be an easy task. Representative, i got to wrap this up, but when you woke up this morning, uh, put, put us uh, in your shoes, your degree of optimism and, and the fight in you to get real health reform in this country compared to a month ago. Well, you know, we've all heard of the long goodbye. The Bacchus plan was the long hello followed by a very quick goodbye. Now we're getting back to focusing on the big issues that many of us care about. Look, I think it's, it is something to be said for the idea now five committees have moved health care forward the first time since the Medicare program passed 45 years ago that that's happened. All that being said, frankly, the Bacchus plan, I think, is the closest to the Republican initiative that we're going to see in this, and that's not something that should guide us. Understood. Representative, we'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. Contessa, what else is going on in the world?